So, when did I learn to pray? When did I cut my teeth? Where did I start? Well, like very many people, the Lord's Prayer. People over a certain age will have learnt it at school. And when I was at school, we learnt it in the traditional version. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I can hear the tune that we used to sing it to in my head. I can remember it, but honestly, I can't say for the most of my life in the early days that I actually prayed it. The words were all rather too complicated. The light came on for me and it became a prayer when I moved away from home and went to a church where they were using the modern language version. And that blew me away. Being able to pray the Lord's Prayer rather than simply recite it, I found it profoundly moving. And to this day, whatever the words on the page that are put before me in a church service, even if I'm leading it, I have to say I always use the modern version of the Lord's Prayer. And I do that deliberately to make a point that these are words we need to pray from our hearts and not simply recite on our lips. I make an exception with the Welsh version for reasons that I will explain on another occasion. But in English, I always say uh, the modern language version. Our Father, it begins. Now, fathers in life are not always good and not always kind to their children. And if yours wasn't, then when you say this prayer, even if you're saying it in public, don't be forced to use the word. Either miss it out or substitute a word mother or another word like creator or enfolder. Think of a word that means something to you that you can put in its place. Don't be forced to put a word on your lips that causes you pain. Find a word that means love care, trustworthiness, authority. We use the word Father because Jesus used the word Father, but none of the human words we use about God are adequate, but we use them to direct and capture our attention and to describe a little of what we know to be true about God. The God we turn to in love and in prayer loves us as the best parent loves the children and when we pray to God, we always use the word our father, our mother, our parent, because even when we pray by ourselves, we remind ourselves that we pray as one of the worldwide family of the church, a family that stretches not over only across the globe and who knows across the universe, but always through space and time, our father in heaven. Now, I hope I'm not going to shock you at this point, because I'm going to say, of course, obviously, God isn't in heaven. Mm. Well, can't be, can he? Because even in Genesis at the beginning, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So if God created the heavens, he can't be in it. Well, of course, as my children would have done, they'd have argued me at that point and say, well, you know, God's everywhere. So in that point, of course, God is in heaven because God is everywhere. But God isn't contained in heaven. It's a figure of speech. It directs our attention, though. It directs our attention away from us, from our just our earthly concerns. God is concerned about our earthly concerns, and we're going to pray about them as we pray. But saying our Father in heaven directs our attention up and away from our stuff. It directs us to the God who holds all that is in his gaze. Now, when I say his and her, we have to admit that God isn't a him either. God isn't a her. God isn't an it. And God isn't a they. But we have to use human language. And English is one of those languages in which it's almost impossible to escape the tyranny of pronouns. So please forgive me for using he, him for God. And do feel free to substitute the pronouns that you wish to use. And for none of us are we meant to take any of our pronouns for God, literally. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. It simply means be praised. It means we praise you, God. Now, it makes God sound arrogant that God needs us to tell God how good he is. But God does not need 
or crave our praise, but our act of praising God, again, like our Father in heaven, lifts our attention above our own concerns, not so as to forget them, but to put them in context. We see ourselves and our concerns, our hopes and our fears within a wider whole. Father has negative context for some, positive for others, positive for Jesus. What it meant for Jesus was the authority, the one who looks out for us, the one who looks for us. In another place, Jesus uses the metaphor of God, the mother hen, who shelters us as chicks shelter under the wings of a mother hen. At one stage in our life, we had uh, free range hens and it was absolutely wonderful. They were bantam crosses and it was absolutely wonderful uh, to see as soon as there was a, a, a bird of prey in the sky, then the mother hens would sort of make it a sound and the little chicks would come scurrying and all these chicks, it was amazing to see how many little chicks could fit under the feathers of their mother hen and they wouldn't be seen at all. And that's another image I like to have in my head when I say those beginnings in the words of the Lord, our Father who art in heaven, uh, like a mother hen, uh, we are safe and secure under the wings of our Father God, our mother hen God, who is above and beyond us, but who loves us just like the best mother hen could possibly love us. He doesn't need our praise, but he wants to lift our eyes above our concerns uh, so that he, we may have the solace of knowing that our concerns are safe in his handling and in his care.